on today's show. The dynasty is real, but just how long can the Warriors sustain this level of success? In Crossfire, the guys debate how the finals will be remembered and where LeBron will end up this summer. And we'll revisit some of our favorite NBA Finals moments. It's Tuesday, June 12th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter. We're very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tess Mellis. Yeah, yeah, sports. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least, over yonder, that is the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey-o! hey yo! TK, what's up tonight? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, the Warriors championship parade was today, and it looks like they had a great time. Steph Curry was wearing two hats for a large portion of the day. Nick Young showed up in a robe with a bare chest, and there were a ton of jokes about Kevin Durant leaving in the summer, so I guess he's not gonna be leaving in the summer. <laughs> we will get into our favorite moments from the parade a little bit later, but for today's question, we're asking you to dig deep into your memory and let us know what you think is the best parade moment of all time. Mm -hmm. Growing up as a Bulls fan, back in the day, it was fun when they would have the Saturday Night Live super fans at the parades. The jokes didn't age super well, but it was fun in the 90s. Uh, who could forget in 2002? Mark Madsen dancing to Shaq rapping at the O2 <laughs> Lakers <laughs> parade. <laughs> Look at these moves, unforgettable. And of course in 2014, Greg Popovich was counting his rings on the Spurs floating parade after they knocked off the Heat in their finals. There's been a ton of great moments throughout the years. That's why we want to know your favorites. So hit us up on Twitter and let us know what you think is the best parade moment of all time. Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you a little bit later. All right, those were some good ones, but let's hear from you. Get your tweets in. Fun show tonight. We got Lee and Trey stepping into the crossfire to debate where LeBron is going to head this <laughs> summer. I told you we're going to keep talking about it. And we're going to revisit some of these starters' best moments from the NBA Finals, these guys out on the road. But let's start with a little is this news. Paperboy Trey is back. He's rounded up the NBA headlines, going to pitch them to us, and we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. Trey, our first one. Paperboy, Paperboy, all about them headlines, <laughs> boy. First one is from Bleacher Report by way of a Lee Jenkins profile at Sports Illustrated. It reads, Draymond Green on the Warriors' success. I don't think the end is near. Is this news? I think it's news that Draymond Green is not coming out with a declarative statement. Draymond Green, usually pretty forceful. I don't think the end is near. Usually a Draymond would say, no, we're not done. Oh, uh -uh. interesting. So I think he knows how difficult it is. As they said, this was their toughest title run. And it's good that they're very cognizant of that fact going into next season. Steve Kerr keeps talking about the game within the game. While we're playing this game, hey, let's get 10 assists this quarter mm -hmm. to try and keep the guys motivated to get younger. So I do think this is news. I do think they... They know what they're up against. And if there's a team that can have a long dynasty, it's this team because they are that aware. They're up against two things for my money. It's money, for one. They're up to $128 million in committed money for next year already with only eight players on the roster. And then complacency is the only other one. Will these guys still have the hunger? Pat Riley talks about the hunger of more. Are guys prepared to sacrifice shots and minutes and fame and fortune and all that to continue this incredible run they've been on? Because if you look at their age, Steph is 30. KD's 29, Dray and Clay, Clay, Draymond and Clay are both 28. So they've still got plenty of basketball to play yeah. and could still be on top. If you look back at other dynasties, for example, back in the Bulls when they finished the second three-peat, they were old and that team was basically going to move on from there. Shaq and Kobe. They got uh, kicked out, Lee. <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, I think Pippen was gone. Uh, Phil Jackson was definitely gone then. And Jerry Krause said, we, we're changing things around. And if you look at the Lakers, their dynasty early in 2000s, Shaq and Kobe just hated each other. They yeah. have to move on from each other. And then if you look at Kobe in 9-10, him and Powell were probably just at the end of their careers a little bit as far as dominating the league, and then LeBron just decided to leave Miami in 2014. So things, uh, dynasties do usually end at some point, but this case for the Warriors, they've still got their core in their primes, and they've still got plenty of basketball ahead of them. I don't think money's going to be an issue well, with for this team. team. I don't really, I don't believe it, because this team is already going into the repeater tax here. Yeah. I think this ownership, they are all in on paying whatever they got to pay to have a, a team that can compete for a championship. We already know Kevin Durant's very likely he's going to opt out and sign the max he can with the yeah. Warriors. You know, they were joking about it today at the parade. You got to assume he's going to be signing a four-year, $160 million deal. We have possible extension eligibility with Clay and Draymond. 
don't see either of them taking that because they, could, they would leave a lot of money on the table. So you'll get to that later with Clay in 2019, Draymond even later. I, I just think this ownership, they're going to be paying top dollar. They're going into a new arena. They want rings after rings after rings. So I actually don't think it'll be money. I think it'll be more likely complacency, yes, if they lose to someone. But the, this idea of like just pride. If, like, I want to be the man, so far, so good. I mean, Curry and Durant are arguably maybe even getting better together. We saw it in the finals there and working together. But will Draymond at some point be like, I want to be the guy? Will Clay want to be the guy? Like, that to me, at least in the foreseeable future, will be the only thing that really would, would shatter this team. I don't think it actually will be money. But, I mean, you're talking about that repeat attack. That, I know. That could be getting up to hundreds of millions of dollars. I got it. But they're going, they're going into a new arena yeah. where they're going to be, you know, price, the tickets are going to go... They'd be yeah. through the roof. I mean, they're going to make a lot of that back is what I'm oh, getting. I get that. But even billionaire owners don't just like to hand out hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, if they do I, slip true. up for a year or two, that's when I think they're going to change things around. If but they lose. If they lose, yeah. Or if they, if My point is if winning. they keep yeah. winning ring after ring after ring, yeah. they may continue to yeah. pay for that. And, and, and the other point, I think Draymond, I think he could be fine as long as he's still making all NBA and all defense and all star teams. I don't think he would want to leave. And Clay, I can't see him leaving. I think he's more than happy playing sort of second, third fiddle on that team because he's got a perfect role. He just shoots three pointers. Yeah. He still makes the all star team and he's still going to make plenty of money. I don't think Clay is the sort of guy who, who's going to get to the point and says, I need to be 1A on a team and I want my own team. We know there was some adversity though. I mean, they kept alluding to it. David West talked about it. We don't know what it was. Mm. Could it have been one of these guys, be it a Draymond, be it a KD, could it have been one of them not happy with their role or, or the touches they were getting or the, the amount of respect they were getting across the league? I mean, that could have been it. I don't think we don't know. Chance. You don't I, think so? No, I think they're just they're too cool. I have no idea what it was, but yeah. it just seems like they're too cohesive for I, what? I who, could who, who? Who could it be? Dre or Clay? I would I guess mean, Draymond. Those were the only I would two. guess Draymond if, those, if it was somebody. But who knows? He can shoot. I mean, what what role does he want? <laughs> I, I'm that talking team? throughout the regular season that oh. David West was alluding to. I think they have an incredible locker room. I'm, I have no idea what that problem was. All right, Trey. Next headline. I think we're gonna have our first modern four peep. Anyways, mm. our next headline is from USA Today. LeBron James says playing in the NBA with his son, Bronny, would be the greatest achievement of his life. Is this news? <laughs> wow. Mm. What do you think? Is this news? Um, it's interesting take on that because of what he's done for Cleveland and winning that championship two years ago. I think it may be it's the most enjoyable moment of his career to sort of end it by playing with his son. I'm not sure it would be the greatest achievement, though. <laughs> you know, but look, LeBron Jr. looks like he is on his way. I mean, he's a very good player already. He's showing he's got some skills, so there's a good chance he will make the league at some point. But will LeBron still be around at that point? Yeah, it's probably, what, five, six, seven years? Yeah, five, five if maybe we get rid of the yeah. got to be 19 to play in the NBA. Six, more likely. Yeah, you're right, maybe seven. <laughs> LeBron Jr. has got to make the league, too, though you're absolutely <laughs> oh, right. He's only oh, 14. Oh, he's got to make the league. Well, I mean, that's the one part <laughs> that we're just like, lock it. I have, it's possible. I, I have no idea, but hey, it's about family. Why can't this be his greatest yeah. NBA achievement? Sure. If he wins a championship with him, that would be his greatest oh, Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's no, rings with, with yeah, Exactly. No, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, well, Gordie Howe, you know, first one to do it, like one of the greatest hockey players of all time, he said one of my most incredible feats that I did was yeah. playing with my two sons. He played with two sons in the NHL in his final year with the Whalers. And then Ken Griffey Sr., played with Ken Griffey Jr., and he thought it was his sort of, like, coolest accomplishment. I'm talking about Ken Griffey Sr., just the mm -hmm. idea of playing with his son on the same team and Ken Griffey Sr. hitting a single and then Ken Griffey Jr. coming up hitting a single. They're both on base at the same time. So I buy this idea of LeBron. Like, this would be a cool little thing to add to his legacy. I, I wonder if it plays into the idea of where is he, where's he going this summer because if he wants to be that old and wants to be there when his son comes in, again, five or six years, does that mean he wants to take a bit of a back seat? He doesn't want to play 82 games, I assume, mm. in the regular season. Does that mean he goes, like, does he want, like, <laughs> younger guys hitch his ride to the sort of like, these young horses? Who's the number one and number two on the team? Is it LeBron Jr., oh. the number one? And LeBron, the number two. Yeah, well, I played with my dad, and I can say that I overtook him as the number one. Wow! Was, wow. <laughs> in a rec league in Australia? Yeah, you took we used over to Dickie? In, in a men's league. Yeah, yeah. it's great. He was Dickie off. the man, and then you came in? You're yeah, like, yeah. As, he, <laughs> as you know, he was a little bit older, of course. So I was the young legs. So, yeah, it was great. We won, we won a championship together. <laughs> oh, dude, you're identical. <laughs> you were the little Dickie before little Dickie. <laughs> <laughs> Final one, Trey. Uh, oh, boy. Final headline <laughs> is from ES. ESPN. Hello, Steve, Yeah, Lee, I did. I played with my dad. We both got technicals in a church league. It was a great time. <laughs> the headline, the Raptors are promoting assistant Nick Nurse 
to head coach is this news? <laughs> Tell me about his dad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know much about his dad, but I know that Nick Nurse is very qualified for this position. We don't know a lot about him, but if you look at his resume, he's been in the G League, he's been an assistant coach for a long time. Yep. And obviously, Masai Ujiri feels that where Dwayne Casey fell down, perhaps Nick Nurse saw that and perhaps he can take the Raptors to the next level because you feel that that's the reason why he's chosen someone who knows the players, he knows Masai, and he knows what's expected in that role as well. I mean, the Raptors aren't expected now to drop back to a 45-win team or anything like that. They're expected to be still 50, 55 wins. And perhaps Nick Nurse, seeing where Dwayne, as I mentioned, uh, was unable to get past LeBron, has some new ideas and a fresh approach, and that might work. The only thing I know about Nick Nurse is that he shot 47% from three in his four years at Northern Iowa. <laughs> oh, the guy can shoot. He loved shooting back in the 80s. He knew the three ball was going to be he big saw it, yeah. 30 years later. Playing coach. I will say this. Uh, <laughs> it's coach. unsurprising news because right when the Raptors were looking for a head coach, I thought it was down to two guys. I thought it was going to be Jerry Stackhouse or Nick Nurse. And Stackhouse ultimately went to the Grizzlies. He joined their staff, so it felt like it was going to be Nick Nurse. He's the guy. I mean, he gets a lot of the credit for helping get the Raptors into this sort of new age, you know, shoot a bunch of threes, move the basketball offense. Mm. You know, that they struggled the year before. They were dead last in just assists and stuff like that. They caught up to the rest of the league, shooting more threes, moving the ball. He got a lot of that credit. So, you know, that makes sense that he would get the, the promotion here. My question is, why did it take so long then if they knew Nick Nurse was going to be the guy? I think you've got well, to ask a few other candidates, interview a few other people, just to get some ideas. There were reports you know? that they wanted Budenholzer, yeah. and mm -hmm. he ultimately picked the Bucks and, and right. a couple other names that they brought in. There was no real rush because the Raptors don't have a draft pick, so you don't yeah. really need to get the coach in to help with that. Uh, they don't have a first-round draft pick. So, yeah, I know it's an interesting part. I don't think it's a name that you know, is super sexy to a lot of Raptors fans. They're just like, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, but that it's doesn't not a sexy have to be nurse. sexy. It is. It's not a sexy nurse. Is that what you're laughing at? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's what you're laughing at. <laughs> so now we have, by the way, we have all of the vacant head coaching positions. They've been filled. Which one's the sexiest name? Yeah, well, the sexiest name to me is Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, and, and, and we got good. three first timers there in Nick Nurse, uh, uh, Igor there, uh, Kashikov. How do you say it again? <laughs> Kashikov. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Lloyd Pierce. So three first timers and then six other guys that have already been in the league. But now every role is filled. Let us know what you think about Nick Nurse, the sexy nurse coaching the raps. When we come back, Lee and Trey step into the crossfire. <laughs> Lee loves that. <laughs> to debate where LeBron will take his talents this summer. <laughs> Welcome to Crossfire. Three rounds to determine who will be taking this belt home to their respective towns of Australia and Illinois this summer round number one. Now the finals are still fresh. We're talking injured hands and sweeps, but let's look into the crystal balls a little bit. How will this 2018 finals be remembered? Here we go. It was a bit of a snoozer, let's be honest here, but I think we're gonna go back to game one when J.R. Smith had a chance to be a hero and instead, he turned into a zero here. He thought he was doing the right thing by running out the clock, giving the victory to the, his team, the Cavaliers, but unfortunately not. That is going to be <laughs> the lasting memory we have of the 2018 Finals. Yeah, I think Lee's right. We'll remember JR. We might remember LeBron's Game 1, maybe even his hand. And of course, Kevin Durant was great, but really we're going to remember this as part of the Warriors dynasty. Think back to the early 2000s Lakers. Nobody knows anything that happened in the 2002 <laughs> Finals. Todd McCullough was supposedly there, but that was the last sweep. Uh, uh, for the Lakers, and it was just such an underwhelming series that it became anonymous. The Warriors already have three titles. They can easily add a couple more. This is going to be a piece of the dynasty, I think. Okay, here we go. Round number two. Now, free agency a few weeks away, so you guys reserve the right to change your opinion. But as of today, where will LeBron end up? Here we go. I think it's about more than just basketball for LeBron. He's got a family to consider and also his business interest. That's why it's going to be the Lakers. <laughs> He's got a big basketball spotlight out there. Obviously, it's the, the premier, one of the premier franchises in the league. A whole bunch of young guys who he could either develop or more likely ship out to make more room. There's already two max contract spots open. A third one could be easily open. We're seeing La Bron. That's in LA there. Uh, I think he's got to stay in the Eastern Conference because he knows he gets straight back to the finals if he does that. I think the best team for him to go for in that case is the Philadelphia 76ers. You talk about cap space, 
They've got enough to sign him. They've got two young stars. He's got a bit of a Shaq to Miami vibe, if you ask me. As LeBron's getting towards the twilight of his career, he's still got two young stars who can carry him through the regular season, then come playoff time, it's LeBron, baby. All right, the battle is <laughs> throwing, strong. Throwing, strikes. throwing fists. <laughs> Round number three, the Warriors parade was today. For all those that didn't see it, what was the best moment, fellas? Here we go. Our meme of the year this year at the Starties was LeBron's King Arthur meme when he uh, Instagrammed just a fist mm. of King Arthur earlier in the season when he wasn't happy. And Draymond Green took that to a new level this year when he had that shirt made mm. of the King Arthur fist with his three championship rings on it. For me, that is just high level trolling from Draymond and that stole the day for me. It's not King Arthur. Yeah, it's, it's just not King Arthur. Arthur. That it's was Arthur that the Hardenberg. That's what we called the meme of the season. It was King Arthur. <laughs> Indeed, we oh, called okay, that. Okay. It was a great meme, but Jordan Bell, clearly the parade MVP. He's just a rookie, but he looks like a vet celebrating out there. Ran out of Hennessy, so he went into the crowd and got some more Hennessy. Then he finished things off by grabbing a broom and <laughs> niming the 4-0 to the fans there at the, uh, at the parade. Great times from Jordan Bell. Yeah. All right, the winner will be taking this home to Sunbury. Yeah. Oh! In a sweep. He's going back to back. <laughs> Lily with the win. All right, after the jump, <laughs> we'll revisit some of the starters' best moments from the NBA Finals. Back in a second. Welcome back to the starters. Every year we send out the boys on the road to cover the finals, and every year, like Clockwork, they send back some amazing stuff. So with that said, let's revisit some of these starters' best moments from the NBA Finals. We are here for Cavs Warriors Part 4, and nobody knows what to call this series, so I'm here with my good friend James. James, what are we going to call this, the fourth installment of this series? I mean, we can only have hope that a new outcome happens, so perhaps a new hope. Very artistic here, this one, Lee. Uh, <laughs> You know, how'd you get this shot? How, how'd this one come about? Yeah, well, you know how it goes. Like, you always take a lot of photos. Oh, that's how. <laughs> oh, I see. This is the fourth time in a row we've seen Cavs Warriors. So what do we call this series? Uh, boring for a lot of the country. Who would you like to pop into your dreams now? I would like Kobe to drop him pop in my dreams. <laughs> you wanted Kobe to come into your dream? I had a couple dreams. Um... But Kobe wasn't one of them. I wasn't really feeling all that confident to go up to those security guards and say, hey, it's game one of the NBA Finals. Do you mind if I just dance in front of you guys? It's, it's a little easier for Steph Curry to do that than it is for me. Can you fill us in on uh, what the dreams were? Yeah, it was a very, it was like a party, you know. Everybody was there from Wayne Brady to, uh, to <laughs> Will Smith to Joe Dumars. It, you could, you could. What, a, what a collection. Everyone's talking about Cavs Warriors 4, but really what people wanted to see was Zeke versus Lee. He was shaking me, and then he said, don't you remember this move? I was like, that move looked kind of familiar. He goes, it's your move. And then he goes, wow. <laughs> well, you know if you ever need a shooting buddy, someone to come out there and rain a few threes with you. You know I'm always available. You're always, you're always yeah. there. I know that. I know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You seem to have forgotten my number, though. You haven't texted me, is it? <laughs> been bad. I've been busy, I've been busy. We can't get Lee Ellis over 23s, man. It's impossible. I'm How does he get that mental edge like you got? I mean, sometimes, you know, the coaching can only take you so far. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be ready for the bright light, so that's on you, that's on you. New 2K19 cover leaked. It's got a whole bunch of words that describe and inspire LeBron. If you were adding a word to it, what word would you add? Loser? If you're adding a word to this, what do you add? I'd have to read all the other words. Greatest of all time, man. Go, go. Super go. Super go, easily. Like with, I don't know, eight horns. Hey, maybe 10. They pretty well covered it. Shout out to the starters, whoever you are. I'm the starter. <laughs> He's the starter. Part of it. Shout out to the starters. <laughs> I love you guys. What is the next big trend that we should be looking for? Um, Fanny packs, for sure. I was definitely one of the first guys in the NBA to consistently rock fanny packs. Back to back, you would never think this is possible. We're gonna get a back to back fanny pack? Yeah, I need to go, I need to make a back to back. Y'all make sure y'all go to JamelMcGee.com slash shop. <laughs> get my fanny packs a headband. Three titles in four years. Another dynasty for you, how's it feel? What was up? NBA champ, how's it feel, man? Oh, uh, you know, I'm just swag champ, baby. That's all, I'm no more swaggy feet. Swag champ. Are you running out of room to keep your rings? 
Uh, I got uh, I got two more digits to, to work on. So yeah. all right, let's fill it up then. Let's fill it up. Let's do it. All right, great job, guys. One more break. When we return, the celebration continues. No going anywhere. With the sixth pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Johnny Flynn from Syracuse University. If the Minnesota Timberwolves had not passed on Steph, it, you'd be looking at a completely different team. There probably is no Kevin Durant. Um, there probably is no Andre Iguodala who came here because he saw a young core and was like, man, I like those guys and it'll be fun to play with them. I always have supreme confidence in myself that with the opportunity I, I would have had, regardless if it was in Minnesota or here, that I could have done something with it. Um, obviously, it would have been a little bit colder. <laughs> what if Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV? All right, the Warriors celebrating their championship today. They had a blast. But we asked you, what's the best all-time parade moment? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, got a few answers. Definitely. Name 1325 says Dirk singing We Are the Champions. Dirk singing always good. MJ says shirtless J.R. Smith is a classic. Yeah, he even put out a shirt of it. That was amazing. But my favorite answer comes from Emerson, who says, when a Cleveland fan ate a piece of horse poo off the street <laughs> next to the queue, that's a real thing that happened. You can Google it, but don't. Yeah, don't. <laughs> All right. Or do. Today, uh, uh, we had a blast recording the Starters Twitter show. Shout out to everyone that joined us live on Twitter. We talked about the finals and all the uh, coaching hires, Casey and Nurse. And Lee told us which team LeBron will not be going to this summer. Let's rule out I some teams. I love the Philly idea. Let's rule out Philly a few teams. Okay, you ain't going to the Raptors. <laughs> Raptors, Celtics, Grizzlies, Knicks. <laughs> Grizzlies. When was the why Grizzlies, Grizzlies popping up? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, these are the teams that have got no just chance. Those so why not so the Knicks? No, I'm the saying, let's the eliminate box. them. <laughs> All right, LeBron is not going to the Grizzlies, according to Lee Ellis. No, this is Alberto and his Italian friends at the still ongoing finals in Munich, Germany. Alba Berlin in five, and they almost got a wedgie, they oh. claim. And uh, this is from Leah out in the Philippines, Aww. watching our favorite show, sh shouting out happy birthday to daddy in there. So uh, great job with the fans on all year long, guys. All right, tomorrow, we got one more show this week. It's the <laughs> NBA Playoff Awards, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. MVP of the playoffs, breakout performances, meme of the playoffs, all that. If you guys Come see on, my man. neck, bring it. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. And remember, we asked on our Twitter account, where is LeBron going? The number one option? Yeah, the Lakers. Race tonight, people. <laughs>